it used to be the good, bad, and the ugly. Now it's just all bad, pretty much, is what it comes down to. Well, you know, we pulled out a few of these to talk about, but my list is actually in one of those three categories, 50 either public or private retailers. All right, so there's 50 total. names on you. Let's go with the first one. Let's say struggling, because that's the most positive one that we have so far. Which retailers are out there struggling right now? I can think of a lot of them off the top of my head, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on this one. Well, we pulled out Foot Locker and Capri, Capri to talk about. And the company formerly known as Michael Kors. Because, yeah, the company formerly known as Michael Kors, because basically we've always loved those two. And it's harder to love them now because they're starting to struggle, and they're struggling for reasons that are pretty evident. It's not the consumer. It's, in Foot Locker's case, direct to consumers hurting them. It's going to Nike. It's going to the other big shoe people. The mall is struggling, so the traffic is not coming. So this whole piece of the business, and I really think, too, they miss Ken Hicks and the management staff. So when you look at what's, what's going on there, you say, this is a great retailer. We thought they'd be around to turn the lights out at the mall, and they probably will be, but even they are struggling. And it's being caused by this environment, not something they're doing wrong. All right, so lights are, lights are kind of going out at the mall. Which ones have they already kind of started shutting off for? Now, we're going to call these ones the dying retailers. Well, I had several on my list, but... L Brands and Abercrombie and Fitch are two good ones to talk about. And the reason there is they're both trapped in the mall. Almost all their stores are mall-based. And when you look at Abercrombie and Fitch, it was the fabulous name, right? We all loved it. Everybody wore it. It had 75% gross margins, of course. Teenager into my college years, all, all Abercrombie and Fitch. But now there is no real there there because the cool kids club isn't a cool kids club anymore. And now they're trying to be inclusive and do all these things. The gross margins have come down, but not enough to drive the business. And neither the Abercrombie & Fitch brand nor the Hollister brand are really driving the business. The only thing that's really working is Gilly Hicks. And it's so small, and it's basically taking share from L Brands. All right. Where are the lights off? The dead. Well, you know, I've got the lights off at both Gap and Asina because uh, I don't see what's going to happen. They're essentially mall-based as well, and Gap will be a mall-based company as soon as Old Navy is separated from it, which is in the process of happening. And then we'll be down to what's left of the Gap, and I don't see that business being strong enough to draw people into the mall, and I don't see it being online enough to drive the business because it's too generic and too much like everything else. So if you look at either one of those two, think about it. You know, Ann Taylor, Loft, the people in the mall that are Asena, there's no strength there. All right, 10 seconds, two winners. Who are they? Two, Amazon, Walmart, Target, Burlington Stores. I can't get two, but I've, there's a lot of winners right. because retailing is fine from the point of view of the consumer. All right, Jay Rogers Niffen, CEO, Jan Niffen, thank you very much.